my guest here says he's going to phone, Ashley. Um, and he is, I'm really pleased to say, somebody who was named Outstanding Newcomer at the Evening Standard Awards for his performance in Michael Grandage's production of Don Juan in Soho. Um, and also Samuel West's production of Dealer's Choice. But he is, as I say, starring, along with Diana Agron in McQueen at St James's Theatre. That is Stephen White and, of course, Diana Agron. Welcome both. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, don't give the answer, either of you, to the, to, to the David Bowie. <laughs> um, and when you came in, Stephen, first of all, and I, I, ha- I hated saying it, but it is you are uncannily like uh, McQueen. And I, um, So now I'm going to ask the most obvious question. Question then. So, um, is that why you were cast, or is it you've become, you've grown to look more like him the more you've rehearsed? Uh, I don't. I think that's a that's a question that I think either John and James, the director and writer, should answer really. But uh, a lot of people, when I had the audition uh, and I told them I was auditioning for the role of Alexander McQueen, said that there was a resemblance. But I think once the hair came off and the goatee started to be grown, uh, that there was, uh, uh, everyone says, a very striking resemblance. And the voice as well, you know, it's a yeah, London well, we, voice. We, yeah, we came, uh, We well, I, I didn't grow up there, but I was born, you know, not far from, from where the, McQueen, the McQueens uh, lived. So, yeah. The, was that the, the East End? Yeah, the East End. I think they're much more up there on Upminster, but I was uh, Romford, Gidea Park area. That's where I was born. And, of course, he ended up in Mayfair, in a very nice house in Mayfair. Yeah, I'm not there. No. <laughs> no can't afford it's that. early days yet, anyone. you're Young. Can't afford that yet, yeah. <laughs> is that um is that where he died? Uh yes. Did he die in Mayfair as yes. well, in that house? Yeah, yeah, in the in the flat. Um there. so welcome. Thank you. And uh Diana Agron, thank you for coming in as well. Is this your first show in the West End? Well, just off West End, your first show in London. Yes, yes, yes. yes. And so were you offered the part or you were offered it? You didn't have to read, you didn't have to audition? Uh no. <laughs> no. But um I think the producer had seen some of the things that I had done last year. So, so tell us the role you're playing. Um, I'm Dahlia. I uh, break into Lee's house to steal a dress. He catches me. And we go out on a, a night together. And it's kind of, you know, takes place in the mind of McQueen. And so you're not exactly sure, you know, this it's a fairy story so there's different kind of rules for this and it's it's named is it after a piece of art or a piece of his fashion he is it the girl mm, in the tree the is girl that, in the tree yeah just explain a, the girl in the tree so there's a quote um that he said you know i have a 600 year old elm tree in my backyard i envision a girl coming down meeting a prince and becoming a queen and so that was uh, are you impressed I'm Stephen? Impressed. <laughs> i'm glad you took that one <laughs> So, um, so yeah, so that's kind of what shaped uh, the idea of Dahlia in this piece um, was, you know, McQueen's quote and, and that show. And um, do you get to wear a, an original McQueen? Or is it- no, but our designer, David Farley, has done a really brilliant job. of. There's one dress that um, the dress that Stephen makes on me. Uh, on stage is uh, really resembles one of the dresses in the collection. And tell me, Stephen, what is it that we find out through this play that we don't know about Alexander? And when I say we, I mean not the people that knew him and worked with him, just us, the public. We were told, you know, we were fed something about his life. Working class boy, hugely talented, loved by his muses, you know, the Kate Mosses, etc. And very troubled in the end and dealing with depression. Have have I got that just about right? Uh, Yeah, I think uh, my... um initial understanding of of Lee was through the tabloid press sort of growing up around that time of this bad boy uh, fashion genius Um, and I think what the play does and what James has done brilliantly is he's uh, looked much more at the creative spirit of of Lee rather than um, attempting to explore what the tabloids did. Um, I think the greatest compliment that we've had from the show is that people come away going, I want to learn more about him. Hmm. There are so many multifacets to his life, to him as a person that I don't think any show could do it justice. Um, So I think that you learn a great deal about the mind of Alexander McQueen, but I think to try and answer every question about who he was, how he thought and and what he achieved in one theatrical piece is pretty impossible. But mm. I think we, we we just try and add to the legacy of what what 
the great man left behind. Mm. And and um, Diana, your character, she, she didn't exactly stalk him, but mm. she found him fast. She would watch through his the windows through mm. his house. Mm. I mean, which lots of people can identify. I found out where a famous person lived once. I was madly in love. So I probably shouldn't say this at the BBC. <laughs> but I remember just sitting, for, you know, for ages on a wall thinking maybe he'll come out at one point. <laughs> and she does that initially, doesn't she? She does. But um, I think that... What uh, what I love about this is um, you don't really know how much of her story is real, um, you know, because she's kind of she tells him this story in the beginning of the play, but you don't know if this is actually true or this is Lee imagining, you know, her or it's just you know because it is kind of this fairy story and because it it does deal with you know the life of an artist and and uh, and kind of what that entails and. And uh, yeah, that's so much of the heart of the play is kind of dissecting those those themes and and what that means. And is there a chorus of dancing girls? Have I got that right? There is. Oh, we've got a troupe of dancers, troop of six, da- uh, two boys and four girls, uh, and they're amazing. Um, well, three boys, including James. And uh, yeah, they're incredible. Um, what they add to the piece and with David Farley's design and what Chris has choreographed and, and worked through with John's direction, just adds to the to what Lee brought, uh, is that um, the, the show has very much an element of, of Lee's mind of what he did with his fashion shows. His fashion mm. shows were beyond so the clothes. So theatrical, weren't yeah, they? Yeah, so theatrical, and they mm. were performance pieces. So I think that we had to pay homage to to, to those elements of what Lee brought to his work, mm. um, and they are fantastic. It yeah. is it is one of the great, life's great sadnesses, is that you only, tr- you know, I only became fascinated in him after his death. Isn't that awful? Mm. And, and, and it, you're right, all the theatre that he did... You know, and then because they all walk on at the end of their fashion shows, don't they? And sort of shrug and then walk off again. And you just in a t shirt and jeans. Yeah. You know, uh, and you think, just think this mind has produced all this. Yeah. Mm. I think because Lee was such a trailblazer, I think that the, the inevitability of that and the unfortunate nature of that beast is that you are only fully appreciated when that talent is no longer there to call mm. upon and it's only retrospectively that people look at his work mm. um, people who knew within the industry I think looked at it but us as the public uh, and and uh, the wider art world I suppose um, are now beginning to fully appreciate what what we've lost yes. um, and that's the, that's the real tragedy and his team mm. must be amazing because uh, as I say I walk down Bond Street quite a lot and I look in his windows which is just like it's like an art gallery you know mm. just seeing the the pieces on display and now you know people are having to reproduce in his image yeah, basically Sarah Burton. Uh, yeah, and, yeah and and you, exact Sarah Burton and you you think gosh you know they must really have to trust their instinct to do him justice, mm. which so far they are. Yeah, well, especially I think it's probably so helpful that she worked with him, you know, for so many years. Um, because I don't think somebody that hadn't worked with him for that Would many years. To do it. No, I don't think so. And she has done it brilliantly. Uh, have you opened yet? Or you still, yeah. you have yeah, opened? Yes. So are you getting people in who um, have worked with him? or did know him because that's always a risk it's it's great if they come mm. back and say brilliant yeah. but if if they say actually that wasn't what he was like at all that's the risk isn't it yeah, yeah we've had um it was a very profound and humbling and moving experience we had the a lot of the family in on our second opening night wow. um janet and michael his brother and sister and gary his nephew who works very closely with him and various other members of the family and mm. uh they have it, that was the validation that I think everyone uh, wanted and, and all we frankly cared about. Did you know they were um, in beforehand? Um, or did... Janet came in first preview, but we didn't know. Uh, and Gary came in on his own on a, I think it was the third preview. And it was an incredibly emotional uh, experience for them, understandably so, because it's it's still a, a very raw for yes. them all. Um, yeah. But they've been amazingly supportive of the show of myself and Diana and everyone involved with the project mm-hmm. and uh, that is that is the most important thing. Well you thing. couldn't get better yeah. recommendation no, could you really? absolutely they've yeah. been fantastic and yeah. uh, that's that's been the greatest joy and gift that I think you could ever wish for when you're when you're involved in a project such as this. Yeah. And Diana, um, you, you know, you've done a lot of television, mm. and um, and assume, I assume a lot of theatre back in the states. Have you or no. are you new to theatre? Yeah, are you enjoying it? I am. I uh, am. And are you enjoying London? I am. I love living here. It's really. I'm from San Francisco, so there's similar 
vibes. But um, but yeah, I, I come here a lot. I have a lot of friends here and I love it. And are you living in London? Yeah. Just tell us what part. Obviously, you don't get the address. <laughs> tell you what... the postcode. <laughs> <laughs> and then people will be sitting on the wall so outside your... Yeah. <laughs> just get your number. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh... The um the way uh, of of for actors to be directed in theatre is completely different to television. Mm. Is it preferable? I know it's different. Mm. You probably have more time to rehearse. I don't mm. know what the turnaround on a show like Glee is. Okay. Um, just for people listening who are not in the acting world, right. what what is the big difference really? If you're putting on a show and you've probably got three weeks rehearsal, I don't know. Maybe you mm. had more. And when you're doing a series like Glee, what is the difference? I mean, it's it's. It's all, it is, it's it's so different. On a TV show like that, you're moving at a pace that is just astronomical and you have to be in the recording studio and then a dance, you know, rehearsal and then back to the thing, you know, back to set and whatever. And then, you know, I did a big, like, kind of studio movie after that that we had three months to is shoot. with Robert De Niro? Yeah, and, and, you know, we had three months in France to kind of just, like, really enjoy it and take our time and set up elaborate shots and things like that, you know. And then last year, I just did four indie movies where it was even more insane than being on the TV show because you just, you're shooting a movie in 26 days, you know, or 32 days, and, you know, you don't have time to do. So it is nice that, you know, we have this experience to get all together and, you know, see what worked and see what's not working and um you know uh and then I think the only time that was a bit more panicked was getting into the theater and teching everything because oh, then you're like it's long, like long day's journey into night isn't it yeah. it goes on and on yeah, and on yeah, and, and on and and you, and yeah. sort of, it's sort of like being in a theatrical <laughs> casino there's no clocks and you sort of go outside <laughs> yeah. and it's dark yeah. and you're like it was light when there. I came in here yeah. I know yeah. I agree yeah. but there is I think one of the nice things if you're doing a run and this is a limited run isn't it mm. so you know you're yeah. not going to be here in like two years time or something yeah. You will, there is an end to it yeah. um, is you can although maybe you're you're probably director probably doesn't let you you can do different things on different nights or is that forbidden um, look at Stephen no no no, no. <laughs> far from it John was very encouraging about that and I think that's mm. the wonder of theatre is that it's live and it's different every night that's yeah. uh, a, an audience will impact how you feel and 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 change the rhythm and the energy within the room and that's the joy of live performance whether you be a musician or or an actor that that, that you have to embrace that live quality and and allow yourself to have a base and a structure and a, a foundation of what you work for in rehearsals, but then play with that. Well, I have really enjoyed meeting you. Let me just say that McQueen runs until the 27th of June at the St James's Theatre. That's until the 27th of June. I'll give you the box office number 0844 264 2140. 0844 264 2140. Stephen White and Diana Agron, thank you so much for coming in. Enjoy the rest of your run. Thank, thank you, you very much.